Welcome back uh, to Texas Boxing Scene. I am joined a again uh, with Travis Crawford, 7-2 and two, Travis Craw Crawford, fresh on a seven-fight winning streak. Uh, how's everything going, Travis, and and, and, and how are you feeling? Uh, feel good, feel ready. You're staying ready, so we don't got to get ready. And just, just staying ready. You, you've won seven fights in a row now. You're seven and two. I, I think the first time I talked to you, you were like one and two or two. I mean, it was two and two, maybe. You won, you ran off seven wins in a row. What, what's that like? You've also picked up a couple of straps. Talk about the success you've had over the last couple of years. Uh, it's just, it's crazy. Like, it's, it's a fun experience. It's something that, like, when I was on two, like, it's something I never thought would happen. Like, getting back on the winning streak and getting the belts, but. I'm thankful for my team, my coaches, Jordan, Juan, and David, who have really pushed me and helped me and guided me to to the road to success. Uh, Louis, who who put me in the position to also get the belts and get and get two big victories, one in Laredo and one in my hometown. I want to get back to uh, your your last fight. You're just 21 years old still, right? You're... Yes, sir. Still just a baby. Your last fight in Laredo, you went into Laredo and fought one of Laredo's favorites, uh, Alex Ramos. Good fight, competitive fight, big crowd. What was that experience like? And walk us through the fight. So, uh, I mean, pound pound. I know is, a, is it's always been a fifty fifty card card show. So going to that fight, I knew like you know it's not even the promotion I got to fight. It's just the judges I got to fight. And um, doing my research and everything, I looked up Alex. And I noticed that he always gassed out after three rounds. So, sorry about that. Coffee burp. Uh, so, so me and my coach, we go and we're looking back and we're observing. I'm sp I'm sleeping in the gym. I'm training three to four times a day, and I'm training hard. And and that fight, I think, is probably like one of the best fights I've ever been in my best shape in. Like I had meal preps, the camp. I had a full camp for once. And then just all around, everything was just perfect. So the film study. And, of course, like, I'm nervous. Like, before a fight, I'm not nervous. But right when I get into the arena and I get my own locker room and everything, like, I'm just I'm just sitting there. I'm, like, I'm nervous. I'm, like, oh, shoot. <laughs> and then um, as time comes, they pull us out of the dressing room. We're walking to the arena. And, like, at first, like, I get a few cheers here and there. My family's sitting front row. And then... Um, then Alex comes out, and they're like, everyone's like, oh, he's finding a Laredo guy. So I started getting booed right afterwards. Yeah, and what was like, that like? That ring walk, you're fighting a Laredo guy, you're fighting a, a local guy in his home arena. What was that ring walk right, what, like, and what was that reaction like? Uh, it was good at first. At first, when people, like, heard my name, everyone started cheering, because I guess I'm, I'm actually well-known in the Valley. Yeah. So everyone was cheering at first, but then when they heard I was fighting one of their guys from Laredo, the, the cheers switched. But, um... Later on during in the crowd, they stopped cheering for him, and then everyone started cheering for me. And, uh, I mean, that whole fight, I went in there with game plan. I knew he was going to try to punch himself. I knew he was going to punch himself out. I knew he was going to come and try to take my head off. So, I, uh, I just, I boxed him. I moved around the ring. I turned my angles. I used my footwork, and, like, me and my coach predicted, by, by round four, he came out the first 30 seconds swinging crazy, and... He was just tired, and I just picked him apart since then. After that, uh, one thing I do got to add is that there were a couple of shots that did hit me in the back of the head pretty badly, so I ended up having to take about a month and a half off due to okay. that. Because you've been out of the ring a little bit. I, I want to I, – I spoke to you uh, a week or two before that fight when we were out there, Jared Anderson card in Corpus Christi, the top-ranked card. And I told you it's a tough fight. I told you you should win, but this is a tough fight. Was he right? Was he tough? Or could could he punch? Uh, he didn't have as much power as I thought everyone okay. said he did. But I mean, I grew up sparring hard hitters like John Racon and so forth. So you got like a one ten pounder being hit by like a one thirty pounder up like growing up. So it, I guess that's what just kind of helped like build up like the ability to take a hard hit. But uh. Yeah, I mean, I give him his credit. He was a good fighter. He 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 pressured me and he picked up on my mistakes. Like when I dropped my hand, he caught me, and it was a pretty tough fight. I, I want to um, ask you about a, a couple of things. First, uh, well, you, you go through the fight. It's a really good fight. Again, you're fighting a Laredo native in Laredo, 
were you confident that you had done enough to get the decision? Did you think that you know there was a chance that they could take it from you, or did you feel like, okay, I won this by enough, they can't take it from me? I knew I had won the fight. It was just more of like, okay, like I'm just in his hometown. Are they going to give me the fight? But one thing that Louis and Papron did, like specifically, they did like spe- specify on is that there would be judges from out of town, so there wouldn't okay. be like hometown favorites. So I was more confident in that, and um, I ended up picking the picking up the split decision win, and it was just one of the 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 biggest wins and biggest victories of my life, like. Just fighting in a big arena, getting a WBC belt, so I had to had to hit a, a a very high jump on that one. That that was a a rough night for Laredo. Uh, Alex lost, and then Felix Garcia got uh, stopped in like a minute in in the in, in the main event. It was a, a rough night for Laredo. Now you picked up, you, you had um, well I guess yeah, you you picked up a WBC youth belt. You have the ABF belt. What what's it like now to be collecting all those straps? It's pretty cool. Uh, like at the age of twenty one, like I have four belts already at the age of twenty one, and two of those belts being in different weight classes: one at one forty, one at one thirty five. And as of right now, I'm looking to pick up another one at one thirty and making that my home weight. And uh, just it's pretty cool. Like people are like, "Oh my, like bro, like you're so young," and I've already got four belts. When people who are like who have even who are older than me, who have been in the boxing game longer than me, haven't even gotten their first one yet. You, 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 you've gotten off, you got a, a good team behind you, you got a good, you know, a, a good system, a, a good promotional team, good trainer. Uh, I wanted to ask you about, well, let's get into your weight first, and then we'll, we'll talk about the next fight. Um, we've seen you all over, different weight classes, we've seen you as high as like 143. We've seen you, what, what weight is your best weight, and what weight do you want to be, you know, the next step, as you start fighting the best fighters, what weight do you want to be at? So I do remember one of our interviews when I first won the 140 belt. I was like, you know, like 140 is my weight. I can't make 135 no more. But all it really was was just my dieting was wrong. And I just wasn't sticking and committing to my diet because I love I love food. Uh, but I wasn't sticking to my diet. So I was like, you know, like I'm going I'm to stay at 140. But that was because I was being lazy. And when I really applied myself because I wanted this WBC belt, I was able to weigh in at 132 pounds for me and Alex, so me, my manager, uh, my coaches, we all sat down together and were like, bro, like, what are you doing? Like, you can, if you could get down to 132, you could for sure get down to 130. You just need to push yourself a little harder and stick to the diet a little bit more. I was like, you know what? Like, with the way I hit, the way I move and everything, I was like, I'll be a dangerous 130. So, like, let's just go down to 130. And if 130 is pretty easier, uh, we could try to push 26. But I want to see how I feel at 130 for at least two to three fights. Well, you're gonna be tall and long for the weight class at 130. I remember when you told me at 140, I was like, I don't know, 140, 140 is kind of big. I, 130, I, I think, w- w- would be an ideal weight for you. How do you? How does your power feel? How, how do your legs feel? How, how's your strength at 130? Uh, so far we're feeling good. I'm at one. I'm weighing around like 139 right now. I've been on my diet. I've been on my cut since about early of last August. I want to say, and. I haven't lost any touch, like my, because I still hit the weights and everything. So my weight ma- maxes are, my weight maxes have gone down about five or six pounds, but it's not nothing like, drastically like what people were saying were gonna was gonna happen. So I'm still eating healthy. I'm still eating clean. Thank you to my meal prep guy, uh, Chasing Gains Nutrition. Uh, everything's just been good. I think what it more is is just that it's the clean dieting and everything that's keeping me strong. What's your diet? What do you what, what's your diet like? What do you what are you eating? So around 6 a.m., I eat overnight oats. It's like an oat. I don't know if you've heard of overnight oats, but it's pretty good. Uh, I They have, like, my, my guy puts, like, extra protein in there. So my, my breakfast is full, and then around 11 or 12, I usually eat lunch, which is a – sometimes it's a variety of meals. Like, they bring me different meals. Like, it could be, like, Mediterranean food, uh, protein pasta, lasagna, protein lasagna, or, like, just, like, some type of, like, turkey meats, uh – Buffalo mac and cheese, which is like I know it sounds like fatty, but it's just the ingredients and the micro micros and everything that they put into it, like the the protein noodles, the healthy chicken, and the low fat, low sodium buffalo ranch. It's just like it makes it onto a healthy meal. So it's not mainly more about like how you eat it, or it's more about how you prep it, what you put into it, and more like just like how big of the serving size it is. 
And uh, right now, you still you're in Corpus Christi. You're gonna to come to San Antonio for sparring. What what what's your what's your plan for your for your next fight, which I want to get into in just a minute. So for the beginning of camp, I spent about a month in San Antonio with Louis, uh, getting all sorts of types of sparring, different types of training. But when it's time to buckle down and really like, okay, like it's time to lock in. I I give a hundred percent of my focus to Coach Jordan Penny. He's I mean he's the one who brought me back from my zero and two record. He He's an amazing coach, probably the best coach in the entire nation. Uh, we have multiple national champions at our gym, and he's he is a really great coach. So he's the one who, who like, no matter what, I always won in my corner during camps. I want to ask you about your next fight. Now, you fought Alex Ramos. There's been rumors about uh, going up and fighting big brother too, Jorge Ramos, uh, who we've seen on ESPN, and other, you know, obviously from Laredo, just like his brother, where are we with that? Is that on the table? Is that being discussed? Or if you versus Jorge Ramos, what what's the discussion there? That fight is 100% locked in. So uh, it wasn't just like, okay, you beat my little brother. Like, I want to fight you. Or, you know, I beat your little brother. Let me go fight you next. After he fought, after me and Alex fought, of course, like, emotions are high. And uh, him and my uncle got into a little argument while they were walking to the backstage. Jorge got into an argument with your uncle, you said? Yeah, my uncle. Okay. So, I mean, my uncle's one of my uncles that have been there since, like, like he helped, like, he taught me a lot of stuff. Like, he's one of the, the people I see as a father figure. So, for me, that, that it hit me a little different. It made me feel a certain type of way. So, that's when I tell Louis, like, I want to fight Jorge next. Jorge, is, uh, he's built a lot different. He's tall. He's lanky. How much do you know about him? And have you seen some tape on him? What, what's your thoughts on Jorge? I've been uh I've been studying him. I've been sparring uh my friend that has fought him before, and and uh I've been learning a lot. Of things. Is your is your friend named Josh? Uh, it's secret patient. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, his name's Josh. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I I I feel like I have Jorge. I know he's not a slouch. I know I can't. I can't take him lightly. You can't take anybody lightly in the sport. Like anybody could get hurt, anybody could get dropped, anybody could get knocked out by anybody. Like we just seen it last weekend. We saw it with the on the overtime boxing card. Anybody could get knocked out by anybody in this game. So he's definitely not somebody I'm taking lightly, but he's somebody that I know that like I shouldn't have no problem with. You said the fight is one hundred percent gonna happen. Is there a date or or when do you think this could happen? Uh, so we're supposed to fight October 26 in Austin, Texas, but uh, Jorge at first pulled out because uh, he said uh, he hurt his arm or his hand or his wrist or something. I don't really remember, but I, I sent him a text. I was like, hey, man, like, hope, hopefully everything's good with you and we can just make this fight happen. And uh, just two days ago, he had texted me and texted me. He was like, hey, uh, let's fight in November. And I was like, all right, cool. So I called my management team and we it's either going to be on a pound for pound card or we're going to be looking to get this fight on the zone. It, it, it's an excellent fight. If we could do that somewhere in South Texas, it would, it would, it would draw really well. Uh, it's two fun fighters, two fighters with, with, with a pretty, pretty big following in South Texas. So finally, I'm excited to see just as a, as a fan of the sport, I, I know both of you, I, I follow both of your career since the beginning. It, it, it's a, it's a really entertaining fight. Um, since you know, since the uh, zero and two start, since you've won seven in a row, would, would this be would Jorge Ramos be your toughest fight? Would that be the best opponent you faced since that start? Uh, in my opinion, I do think after from what I've seen, like I gotta be in the ring with both of them, but I do think Alex is a little better than Jorge. But I would say my toughest opponent was probably Kalen Alfred. Who would uh? Who was very shifty, move a mover who switched a lot of his fight styles. Like he goes southpaw orthodox, and he was very awkward. And who himself has been in the ring with a lot of prospects as well. Um. So we're looking at at, at a November fight, uh, November date for that. What weight would that take place at? One thirty. Yes, sir. All right, Travis. I appreciate you. Thanks for hopping on. Uh, are there any sponsors, any shout outs you want to give? And, and where can everyone find you? Uh, where can everyone find you online? Uh, they, you can find me online at Travis C underscore 361 on Instagram and Travis Crawford on Facebook. 
I want to give a shout out to uh, Mr. David Garza, who's helped me a lot throughout camp. Uh, Jesus Martin, who owns Simplicity Salon, who helps me out through a lot in camp. The Minky Foil Studios, owned by Cash Money Vibes. Um, Myers and Mr. Jason, and Louis and Louis and Coach Jordan Penny. Appreciate your time, champ. Look forward to seeing that fight. Uh, yes, best sir. of luck to you. God bless you too. All right, God bless.